and welcome to the Sneaker Files Podcast. I'm your host, Eugene. You can find us online at sneakerfiles.com. That's sneaker, P-H-I-L-E-S.com. On Twitter, at sneakerfiles. And on Instagram, at sneakerfiles underscore podcast. Once again, we're recording live from the Stay Fresh Studios, Canada's premier sneaker consignment store. You can find them at www.stayingfresh.ca. And there's actually, maybe next week, I'm ready to announce some big plans. What? That Stay Fresh is working on right now, and nothing's confirmed yet. Right. But like, they're legit on the brink of announcing something big, Interesting. and we might be able to break that news. So, everyone listening that has checked out the Stay Fresh website or the store or whatever, stay tuned because there's something huge coming up, and I want to be able to announce it to all our listeners. Man. That's exciting. Yeah, man. And if you want like earlier access to these details, make sure you watch our uh, Sneaker Files YouTube channel. Because I, I do a lot of work with Stay Fresh, and I cover a lot of their their ongoing stuff. Like Every time we go to a sneaker con, which is coming up again, the LA Sneaker Con in early August. You guys heading over to that? Of course, we have to. Sick. We have to stock up for stuff, man. Man, that's sick. Big hint. We have to stock up on a lot of sneakers and Supreme. <laughs> and Supreme. Yeah, man. <laughs> Anyways, Pierre, you're welcome to come man, to LA if you want. Oh, you know what? Let, let's you, see if I can have, make it happen. You haven't been on the videos enough. Man. I know. It's just me and like with Wayne. I'll let you talk to my agent, okay? All right, man. <laughs> one day I have to get through to like your agent's assistant to go to your agent to be able to talk to you. One you got to be. I'm, I'm a pretty busy guy, so <laughs> I understand, man. But anything for Stay Fresh because Stay Fresh is thank goodness dope. They got you. Yeah, they dude, got we you. just talking to the owner for earlier like, uh, for like 45 minutes. Yeah, it is. And it was so cash. It was. That's how it is. Shout man. out to Alex. Is exactly, dope. man. So, anyways. Anyways. Sitting right in front of me, we got. What's up, guys? It's Pierre. Hey, Pierre. How's it going? Uh, you tell me how's it going, dude. You're excited. Awesome. You're excited. S- oh, I'm. Yeah, I am excited. I had Excellent. a really good weekend. A really good week, sneaker wise. Sneaker wise. All right, man. Maybe yeah. we'll get to that in a bit. Let's get back to that later. So before we start, maybe I should play a game with you. <laughs> no, <Nope. laughs> I'm down. <laughs> All right, man. It's so, been a while. I kind of miss it. I know, I know, but it, it, it's, it's one of those things we kind of retired for <laughs> yeah. a minute, just because like you were too good at this game, so I'm like, it's not fun anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I started practicing it on um on my off days just to make sure. Yeah, just pull random <laughs> <laughs> suggestions out of the hat. So, anyways, the name of this game that I play with Pierre intimately is. <laughs> called Pierre's Top 3. And the whole purpose of this game is to kind of free Pierre's mind so he can wow. think more freely throughout the recording of this podcast. So I'm going to name one category. <laughs> and without thinking or thinking as quickly as possible, you will name your top three choices of that category. You ready? Yes. So, you know, it's oh my God, I'm getting scared. hot up here, man. It's really I'm, hot here. I'm like, getting, we're sweating. I'm sweating right now just for the anticipation. So that means it's in the middle of the summer right now, yeah. okay? And one of my favorite things to do in the summer... The things that I look forward to the most are the summer blockbuster movies, right? Oh, shit. So, Pierre, what is your top three summer blockbuster movies? Independence Day, Marvel. <laughs> that is not a movie. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> Judges? I know. <laughs> and Spider-Man. Spider-Man 2 or something. I don't know. All right. Fair that enough. was quick. <laughs> yes. Without thinking, man. That's the whole point of the yeah, game. Yeah, yeah. And, and and it's basically one of these games that's set up for you to fail. <laughs> but it's not Marvel. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> well, maybe next... No, no. That's February. I was going to say Captain Marvel, but that's next summer. I thought Captain Marvel was a female, no? Yeah, she is. Okay, good. No. Doesn't mean like she's not a Marvel character. Okay, good. Just making sure. Just making sure. I'm excited for that too, by yeah, the way. I know. Because she supposedly is pretty much the most powerful superhero in the whole Marvel lineup. Did you just give me spoiler alert for... No, that's known fact. It's okay. like tell me telling you Spider-Man spins webs. Okay. It's just going to be weird and interesting how she just shows up out of nowhere without any story. They're going to give her a backstory. The movie takes place in the 80s. Oh, so there's going to go, go... There's going to be a standalone. It, it's a standalone movie with Captain Marvel, and I'm guessing, because I know nothing about it, no one in the world does, is the end of that movie is going to tail into the see. Avengers... Yeah. Uh, five or whatever they're gonna call it. Interesting. Yeah, man, I'm excited. I'm Woo! Excited too. So, anyways, anyways, there's a few things that uh, are coming up very, very soon. Yeah. Maybe we'll get to that right now. Let's do that. So I got in my notes. It's just not coming up very soon, but like they have been announced. So the first one would be announced. I think yesterday or the day before it was confirmed that on August 4th. So in a couple of weeks, three weeks or so. We're going to get the retro of the He Got Game 13s. Yeah. You excited for that? 
I got to watch the movie to get excited. You've never seen the movie? I've seen the movie, but I got to get it. You got to see it again? Like, I mean, the, when, we've had this conversation. 13s for me, the be all and end all are the Flints. And okay. I was a little bit disappointed that it didn't get released, but shame on me for putting all my eggs in one basket when it wasn't even announced. <laughs> <laughs> remember that? Like I do remember. I was heartbroken. We man. were trying to warn you. It was like these are just yeah, rumors, not confirmed. Yeah. And you were so sure you were gonna get them. Well, Pino told me. All right, man. <laughs> well, here's the thing, man. With Pino's, you know, late breaking news or rumors or whatever, yeah. I have a feeling that he's right when he announces it. It's just Nike or Adidas changes it. Changes yeah. it after he's announced these uh, pretty much confirmed yeah. rumors. You know what I mean? No, I agree. So uh, he got Game 13. The fact that these were featured in that movie, that Denzel got to wear them and all that stuff. <laughs> yeah. Is that the selling point for you? Or is it the fact that it's a nice shoe or... But you're not a. Are you a huge fan of the Thirteens at all? I th- Flints. 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 I missed out on the cherries, but I'm sure I can get that again. But the Thirteens are cool, just because the. Not even the black reds. The black and reds are really nice. One of the kids that I coach was wearing it actually in the game last weekend, and Damn. it was dope. Yeah. That that shoe was like, that came out before. Yeah, the Thirteens are good. You know what? Correct. I, I stand corrected. The Thirteens are dope. They are dope. They are dope, right? I, I really do like the black reds, just just because of memory. And yeah, stuff like that. squadrons are really nice too. They right? are nice, yeah, but the it's not like are really nice too. They're all very nice. It's just I have, I don't know. Thirteens are so hard to pull off with just fucking street yeah. clothes and stuff like that. So I have to be very careful which ones I buy. And yeah. I only have a few pairs. That's why flints. I've seen flints with like jeans, jeans. and they're because dope. they're blue. Yeah. Absolutely. Perfect. So do you think you're going to go for a pair of these He Got Games? I'm I'm in there with hype, so most likely, okay. dude. And I don't have a pair of 13s yet, so. I If if this were your first pair of 13s, the OG heads out there is not going to fucking shit on you. Really? I think so. This is a very suitable first pair of 13s for on anyone's court, collection. On court, though? Like, what is the significance? There's no significance on court. It was just in that movie. He didn't wear it at a playoff mm-hmm. or anything? Not, there, there was a proper playoff 13. Yeah. But it's not this one. The playoff 13 was the red? The black red. Yes. Yeah. Right? So that's the more significant colorway when it comes to oh, yeah. on court Jordan. Yeah. Yeah. I'd oh. go for the... My black reds would be my first one, Flints, and then He Got Games are very important Ooh, in, in the collection. I actually sold my last retro of the, the He Got Games because at that time I was purging like some of my retros. I'm like, I don't need this. I don't really? Because I never wear them. What's the um, time frame right now? Has that been five years or since? I think the- it's 2012 or 2013, so right on that five-year mark that like we used to talk yeah, about. That's, like, the, that's when they cycle over and over. Five years d- does seem to be a new generation of sneakerheads coming up that are going back to get stuff that they missed the last time yeah. they retro. So that five-year mark is the sweet spot that Nike has figured out for uh, retro. Nice. Yeah. So the next thing, I, I'm not very interested in this, so we're just going to touch on this for a second, is the Jordan 1 low fly knit shattered backboards. Doesn't this look like a craft project, like an arts and craft project? You're talking to the wrong guy. Dude, Dude you, do you still wear your... Yes. You still wear your bread... Yes. Breads, right? I have breads and I have royals. Oh, my God. You doubled down on the fly knits. <laughs> Dude, it's half price. So you basically Remember, pay for one full at shoe. Least I'm being, <laughs> at least I'm being honest here, right? That's so, fair enough. Yeah, my, my, Do they still get good wares? Oh, dude, they're sick. Like, what I, what I always talk about is that guiltless hype. I mean, they're not fair hype, enough. but they're they're close to it. It's, no, it's an homage to, to my breads and my royals that I have. But so. these lows. Those lows are dope. All right, man. Lows I'll, I'll put dope. you down for a maybe. <laughs> yeah, maybe. For I'm going to have to pass. I'm sorry. I don't do uh, Jordan 1 lows very often. Really? Yeah, I'm not a big Jordan low guy. I recently saw some dude wearing like the Bre- uh, Chicago 1 lows. Yeah. And those are sick. Those aren't bad. But Chicago 1, any fucking yeah. makeup of it is dope. Yeah, that's true. Chicago 1s are just one of those perfect looking shoes. You know, know. what I mean? The color blocking is just executed really well. It is, man. And it's the first one. Yeah. I can't hate it. Yeah. And uh, speaking of homage, the Jordan 1 <laughs> Board of Governors. You see that? Dude, WTF on these. But for some reason, here we go. I kind of like them better than the home homage. What is it? It's the homage, right? Yeah. Homage, right? Yeah. Homage. This one is called the Board of Governors. Basically, the homage was uh, the, the Chicago and the bread. Yeah. This one is like the white and the royals. <sighs> For some reason, these are better, but that line the, in well, the does middle, not say much, though. <laughs> I know it's not. I know. I know. How they're, do you feel about the 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 original, the Chicago Breads? They're cool. They're cool, but <laughs> but they're but they're but they're weird. Like you're. I think they're supposed to be like one of those shoes that, 
starts a discussion. Yeah, it's a little bit two faced, of course. Well, you know what? I was I was in like when I was in Japan and I saw this MTV Asia video where it was Japanese guys and one guy was wearing the homage and yeah. they're dope. They were dope, like on feet. Okay, okay. So you saw it on the music video. Right? Yeah. Here's the thing, man. In music videos, they have very extravagant yeah. costumes and that's the thing they yeah. were in costumes and they were also in the desert <laughs> <laughs> dunking so, over people in the desert yeah so and that's the thing man like i said these are costumes that these people are wearing so yeah. of course they will look kind of fitting for that kind yeah. of setting right but as an everyday shoe do you think that's something that can be executed easily though no you have to really think about what you're wearing for something like it'll this. break some necks but definitely in it'll a good be way hard. though um Breaking necks at the end of the day is no matter how good or how bad it is, you're still breaking someone's neck. Fair enough. Yeah. So I I think these the white and the the royal board of governors. I feel about these as much as I feel about the the first one. It's just I don't I can't see anyone wearing these. Yeah. I like if it, you get it, it at fifty, would you cop? No. Even at fifty percent, it's a nice display piece. I wouldn't. Yeah. Like, if you know me at all, I, I'm not. I have nothing against display pieces. Yeah. Man. Like all my shoes are display pieces, <laughs> and, and I like that. It's just I don't know w- what kind of story they're trying to tell. I know. So I know. It, it's just for me. It's just like okay, the fucking homage sold really well. Let's try this one. Now. That's what <laughs> it seems like Nike's doing. For Is me. it the? Uh, it's not the. Um, it's the Royals and the Blue Toes, like uh, the. The, the black, fragments? The fra- I it- don't know, man. Uh. It is what it is, so fuck <laughs> it. <laughs> it's, I don't think that they're running out of ideas yet, but it's a mash. It's basically Two-Face if he was a sneakerhead. Yeah, man. It, like this, <laughs> That's why I said it. This is a costume, man. <laughs> Two-Face if he was a sneakerhead. And don't get me wrong, man. Of course it's not like, oh, shit, the ones sold really well. Let's make this. No. The planning phase for these Nike things like happened years in advance. Of yeah. course, this is this is in the in the bag in the book for a while now. Did when, they like, sell really well? The they on- sold out. Can yeah. you get a pair now? No. Then they sold well. Yeah. So that's that's all it is. Yeah, that's true. I, I, and the next thing I kind of want to talk about is I saw on Twitter and Instagram is blowing up is the new the second iteration of the JTHs. The Jordan 3, Tinker, and Justin Timberlake. The beige, shit. right? Yeah, the bio beige bio or whatever beige. it's called. How do you feel about that? Because we've seen it before in yeah. his pop-up shop. Um, No, for me. Did you like the OG, the Super Bowls? Yes. Okay. Oh, those are sick. Those are very nice. Yeah, and those are still 500 bucks. Like, And they re-released over and over, right? So, Those are Tinker 3s. No, no, no. The JTH is also re-released. Really? Uh, I, I don't know what platform sold them, but they have had a, a proper gen, not general. They, yeah. they had they had a proper retail release. Those well. are different from the foul line threes, right? Much different. The foul line threes have nothing to do with the Tinkers. Okay. They're just a Jordan three retro. I see. But the Tinker have the swoosh on it. Oh. So there's a swoosh, and then there's like the fucking like, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Anyways, uh, I think a lot of people are saying that this is like a really ugly shoe. Yeah. I don't think it's like ugly. It's it. I think you can work well more with street clothes on this just because of that beige, but it's not for me. It just looks weird to me. The color blocking is a little bit different. It's a single color, man. Like There's not much color going on. There's red on the back still. There's the red heel tag. And the problem is like we saw the JTH sell really well, and then it's not this shoe was not, not a surprise because we've yeah. seen it before at his pop-up. The only thing is like, why are people so divided about this shoe? A lot of people were like, these are sick and everything, and another people were like, these are the ugliest fucking Jordans I've ever seen. It, it's just so weird. Like, it's so divided. Well, it's it's funny because like when when you release a shoe, it's really up for grabs and how people gravitate towards yeah. it, right? So you don't know if it's that Justin Timberlake factor or it's really a nice shoe or yeah. if it's like the colors that you can wear with it. I don't know. It's 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 different. If you ask me, I think that Nike or Jordan brand in general, like I think at the moment, depending on how you want to see Drake's alliances, allegiances, <laughs> I think JT is probably the biggest entertainer they have under some sort of contract right now. I would now. say so. Because JT's huge, man. He's been around since like I was a fucking yeah, fetus. Yeah, and JT's dope. He's super dope, man. And he encompasses so many levels. And he gets not just better. dudes. And, and yeah, like dudes who love this guy yeah. are proud of it. Yeah, man. I love JT, man. I got Me too. basically all his, sing- or, uh, all his solo albums. Th- top three JT songs right now. I can't think of the names of them. <laughs> the Tell Me You Love Me is a good one. Which one is that? Uh, Sing it. <laughs> no way. I'm not going to do that. Don't get get me. <laughs> Almost got got there. Anyways, yeah, man. JT, he can sell anything. I think these will sell out no matter what because they'll be limited and they're yeah. JTs. And they're kind of tinkers as well. So. Limited? Are they going to be super limited? They, they have to be limited. If they don't release these <laughs> as a limited release, Nike's making a mistake. Fair enough. 
And one thing that's not sneaker release that I want to talk about is probably some happier news is that the Back to the Future 2 movie that came out in, I don't know, whatever, 80 something. Yeah. Uh, anyways, the original. Uh, Air Mag, no, not Air Mag. I, I, I had I had a I had a little Twitter poll going on. I don't know. If we talked about this. Is, no. I, I did a Twitter poll asking people, "How do you say? Is it Nike Mag or Nike Air Mag?" And what happened? And the majority voted Nike Air Mag. Really? But There's in my no recollection, Air. Air is not written anywhere on that shoe. Yeah. I think people just are so used to saying Nike Air, whatever. Yeah. That they added Mag to it. I'm like that too, man. Like, like it slips, man, even yeah. for me. But, but a shoe that does not have an air bubble is not considered a Nike Air, correct? I, no, I don't think so, man. I think Nike Air is just like part of the branding now. Mm. But it did start from like, you know, fucking having that air unit and all yeah. that stuff. Uh, whatever the case, Nike Mag or Nike Air Mag, the original prop, yeah. one of the shoes, the left shoe, not in the best shape. Yeah. It, it's kind of disintegrating. It's crumbling. Exactly. AF. It, was auctioned off man like as a movie prop as a sneaker whatever you want to call it a memorabilia that's very historical in value yeah so that thing got auctioned off how much was it it raised ninety two thousand dollars us like a single left shoe uh probably like i'd give it like maybe 0.5 out of 10 yeah (laughs) it's not it's not in the best shape it was like they they basically like vacuumed up all the little pieces yeah and like gave it back to the, the, the <laughs> it's like effect exactly, on it man. right i'm like all right i man, saw the pictures i was like ooh. but if you see any like old 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 og jordans they are all doing that like powdering yeah so whatever but the coolest part about this is that this is an auction in in what do you call it to raise money for yep. the michael j fox foundation absolutely so of course michael j fox has what is it parkinson's exactly yeah um uh, and very publicly, he has started uh, the Michael J. Fox Foundation and Absolutely. all that stuff in, in, for the awareness of Parkinson's. And yep. every single time a Nike mag officially releases through Nike or whatever the case is, it's always um, with partnership with the Michael J. Fox, yeah. Fox Foundation. So Remember a couple of years ago where they ha- they raffled? Raffled. Yeah. I think like that was an even cooler way of, dope. of doing it instead of having an auction because like the ceiling to to how much money they can raise was legit like fucking endless yeah it was limitless that was good that was a really good one exactly and that was like one one of my first reiterations into the sneakerhead sneaker game yeah right knowing because that was like real that made like the real news Absolutely. not just like sneaker blogs yeah. and stuff right and you can raffle it out you can buy like a ten dollar ticket exactly or something like that. so good for them so that's pretty much it for all the kind of news and upcoming shoes yeah. just to get a quick take on it so we're gonna try and keep it really really short and sweet and condensed today just because like, you know we got stuff to do it's hot up here too man <laughs> before we move on i, I kind of want to get your opinion on something okay yeah of course. so i've been it's been super hot like i said before it's dead heat summer right now yeah and like i'm always wearing shorts and t-shirts everywhere i go i can confidently leave the house without a jacket now and in vancouver that's a big fucking deal yeah it's always a hoodie with you. You always have that hoodie. It can rain at any second in Vancouver. Yeah. And and you know how it is, man. You just always want to be prepared. Absolutely. I love anything with hoods and lots of pockets. Got it. And that's usually my uniform, right? <laughs> and like to, to wear certain, certain shoes with shorts, that's kind of, that can be a challenge sometimes. Okay? Yes. I'm not wearing my fucking Yeezy Boost 750s in these shorts. Okay? <laughs> and I was brought to my attention earlier. I was kind of fucking clowned on a little bit, but I didn't take offense to it, right? Yeah. And then someone was asking me, he's like, blah, 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 and and then talking about, like, sneakers. Okay. And he's saying, like, oh, what shoes are you going to You only wear two pairs of shoes. You only wear your silver bullets and your trainers. And, in fact, I'm wearing my trainers right now. But that's your rotation. Yeah, exactly. Two-shoe rotation. That's fine. But here's the thing, man. Like, it, it's not because, like, oh, shit, I don't want to undies all my – well, it's part of it. Part of it, yeah. But, like – I'm like I'm just kind of lazy, and these are my fucking everyday shoes now. I have two pairs, three technically, including my work shoes, which is a pair of Super Beat Ultra Boost 2.0s. Crazy, and, and I wear those to work every day. I probably got like hundreds or maybe a thousand. Those are the miles. core blacks, right? Yeah, man, like yeah. thousands of kilometers in them. Yeah. So, anyways, that got me thinking a little bit. I'm like, should I be offended? Is was that a fucking jab at me that I only wear two pairs of shoes, even though I have like an embarrassing amount of fucking sneakers? And like, I have a few pairs at home. You've seen it, and. At that vast kind of collection, and I only technically get seen wearing two pairs, is that something I should be ashamed no, of? No, absolutely no. Capital N O. No. It's not because, like, oh shit, like, he just thinks he looks good. I'm like, no, I'm just kind of lazy. I don't want to fucking. These are slip ons now. To be honest with you, I'm similar to you, Eugene. Like, I don't know, man. You're I'll always have... breaking necks. Yeah, but 
they go straight to the box right after and like clean them and like, try to act them like they're still what? BS. Because here's the thing is that no ma- long story short, to you and to the listeners out there, whatever you effing do with your shoes, yeah. whether you wear one and keep 80 million of them in stock, whatever you, whatever, you have the right to do whatever you want because you paid and you earned that money and you did whatever you wanted with them. Yeah, that's the right response to have to this situation. But Absolutely. I'm saying like I've paid who knows how much money for all my shoes and my collection, right? But not to take to not take advantage of all the shoes that I have and I only wear like two or three rotation every few months. I, I have this look of dumbfoundedness because it there's not don't worry about it, Eugene. Honestly, don't worry about it. here's the thing is that if you don't wear these shoes, you can still sell them and it'll still be you'll still get at least your money back minimum. Right? You might take a loss of like ten, fifty dollars, yeah. but you're still gonna get your money back. Fair it's enough. liquid. Right? Well the thing is like about the collection that I already have, it's whatever, right? But to have all those shoes, okay? Let's just say let's just say I have like a hundred pair of shoes. Could yeah. be more, could be less, whatever. Yeah. And I only wear two out of them. Is that kind of indulging myself or what do you call it? Do you think that's kind of being the wrong type of collector or sneakerhead? No. It, it, no. I'm not saying like I'm offended by something that yeah. this guy said. I'm just No, saying. I'm just like I'm I'm thinking about it. like no, like because because we all as sneakerheads, we always believe in certain things. We always believe in that perfect time whether you're going to wear something or not. But also another thing too is that sneakers are kind of lazy too. Like oh, yeah. we have a lot of boxes and yeah. and to look into your library yeah. of shoes. Yeah. Here's another thing dude. Does a does a person who has a lot of books get choked at like like if he only he or she only has read one book? Well, that's and the stocks thing, man. Like, the rest. I I don't know that answer. It's just because like why would you buy a book without reading it? Because it looks nice. Some people do that though. Okay. Right? Some people just have it there because like, hey, you know what? There, I have video games yeah. that I haven't played yet. And you know what? For me, my, my thing was, was like, you know what? It's a, it's a Thursday night. I have nothing to do. I really like the story of this one. I'm going to play the second one. And it just turns into a night of just like exploring that game. What I'm trying to say, dude, is that yeah. once you have a library of certain things, yeah. I think it's cool. Whether you use it or you don't. It's what you have. Yeah. One thing though is that no matter what you have, say you have Wotherspoons and you haven't worn them yet. Yeah. If I have Wotherspoons, I have a feeling I wouldn't have worn them <laughs> yet. No, I know I haven't worn them yet either exactly. too. But no matter what, you still have those. Yeah, man. And that's another that's another thing about being a sneakerhead is you put this on me earlier in the game is that sometimes it's really about the chase. Oh yeah. Well, the, the biggest thing with me is like why I have so many shoes is because I only get. Technically, I only get one shot of getting these at retail. And a lot of times I get lucky or I, I, I just happen to know the right people. Yeah. And I'm able to get those at retail. And for me to say no, that would be a bad economical decision for me. <laughs> well, if you say no, it could be good because you're saving money. Yeah, depends on how you want to see it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly, yeah. right? Whether you buy it or you don't. Yeah. It's up to you. Really, the, the main the main fight, the main thing that you have to look at is yourself. Is like, are you okay with not buying these shoes, knowing that maybe later on it's gonna eat in you and be like, hey, you know what? Like, I really like those Atmos ones that I didn't get. Yeah. I think I should just buy them. Yeah. Because. Well, and that's the thing, man. I used to practice that. Like, shit, I'm just gonna buy everything just in case I want it later. Even stuff I didn't want at the time. Yeah. I'm just like, okay, well, I have a chance to get these at retail because blah, blah, blah. Yeah. I'm like, should I get these or should I not? But I always end up getting it just in case I change my mind <laughs> yeah. later. And a lot of times I haven't changed my na- yeah. my mind. That's why I have a few pairs of shoes in my collection. I'm like, why did I buy these? <laughs> and that's exactly why. Like your nine pairs of NMDs. Oh, fuck. It's more than nine. <laughs> it's like I legit have like maybe 15 to 20 pairs of NMDs. Well, you're... And I've worn one. <laughs> well, now we know that in... In this area, you yeah. have probably the most extensive collection of NMD. Just R1s, too. Like, the fucking original first year R1s. But that's cool, though. I guess so. I mean, I think that's cool. I think that you the time that you put to curate these NMDs 
whether they're sitting or not, whether they've lowered in value or not, is still cool. Yeah. Dude, there's guys out there that just have a plethora of Air Max 1s. Because Air Max 1s are fucking awesome. Absolutely. NMDs did not prove his test of time. Air Max has. But you're still part of history. Maybe maybe in 20 years, man, the NMDs will be like the Air Max 1s. But, and my OGs will be worth well, something. Well, you know, one thing about me is that I always look at the positive, positive side of things. Yeah. But I think that's dope. Like... At the end of the day, dude, don't worry about the money that you spend. Don't worry about to. the time that you think you have these. So look at what you have because no matter what, you spend the money already. Yeah. Right? But what's cool is that I can go to someone and be like, hey, you know what? I I know a dude that spent this amount of time curating these like pairs of shoes and NMDs, and he can tell you what the color blockings are, what the yeah. OGs are because he knows that. <laughs> and you do you do well, know that it's almost like this thing that just kind of faded out it'd be like <laughs> if I told you my friend has a fucking extensive collection of VHS tapes how impressed oh, would you be fuck <laughs> you know what I mean you got me there <laughs> it's like yeah man at the time it was so fucking cool yeah but by the time true. I finished my collection it was not so cool okay that's true that's true um, I'm not saying like NMDs are the VHS <laughs> you, of the sneaker world they're starting to <laughs> oh my god they're like almost beta max well, at this the, point at the end of the day they're still OG they're still the first release of something you know what I'll take that they're still the first release of something. so me wearing just two pairs over and over when i have x amount of shoes to to choose from i think that's okay it's not a faux pas no it's not it's Fair not enough. it's not it's, i like your attitude it, it's 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 not that at all like at one point in time i know that you're gonna wear those shoes and no matter what <laughs> don't bet no, on it doesn't matter no matter what though dude is that i can come to your place and and i can be like wow this is awesome um your enthusiasm with shoes is really what carries all sneakerheads. Yeah, I guess. Like the person that comes at you, I've with all the experiences that I have with everything that you guys have, you know, shared in this podcast, what I realize is that sne- being a sneakerhead has so many different meanings. Yeah, man, that's what I'm trying to express in this podcast. It's yeah. like every one of us comes from a different background and a different whatever. It's just the sneaker thing that brings us together. Maybe we have different experiences with sneakers, but we all talk about the same sneakers over Absolutely. and over. Absolutely. And that person that made that comment, whether it's a joke or it's not, it doesn't matter because you know what? I cried. They don't understand. No, no, no. They, they get it. They're just jabbing at me because we're friends. I know, I like know. That. But they don't, it's all cool. they don't understand what it is to be a sneakerhead. Like, Maybe and it's not, a bad th- it's not a bad thing is that yeah. they don't value the same way we do. They don't look at the same way we do as sneakers. Yeah. That's what I'm going to say. I think my trainers and my and my silver bullets go with everything. Dude, so that's your why silver, at, and those silver bullets are dope. I don't know why people kind of slept on those things, man. Not like they were like easy to get, yeah. but if you just went to the store the day of, you could have gotten a pair. You know what? For me- My friend got two pairs. I slept on it because there were so many things going on at that time. There were so many shoes. And you know what? When they restock, yeah. it's like, well- they're going to restock again, hopefully, and I'm going to keep on waiting. Here's the thing, man. Don't ever take your chance. I know. But if you can't afford, if, if you're tight or whatever, like that's always the case. Yeah. doesn't matter how many times they restock or don't. Right now, the one thing that I really missed out on and like about a year and a half ago are the Alexander Wang's by Adidas basketball shoe. Did you actually want those? I really wanted Were those. Were you going to play basketball on them? No, they're so dope. Like It looks so bricky like so patchy it, it it was crazy don't worry man there's lots of shoes coming out that will look very similar i know they well they just released a second reiteration of the adidas um alexander wangs right there you go they're low cuts now but i like the basketball ones anyways so put that out of the way i got a little thing off my chest but yeah. do you have like through during last week we talked about like how the yeezys were kind of bricks oh and man everything. can i get something off yeah, my chest man. can i get something off my chest if kanye is listening all right I want to thank him for providing me with such an awesome sneaker head, sneaker experience last weekend. Okay? What do you mean? Did he come to your house? No. Delivery of pair of shoes? No. All right. What, what but happened? what he did was that he promised that he made in 2015 to make these Yeezy sought out, um, readily available or widely available to other people. Yeah. Whether it's getting to that or whether it's there already... I thank him for that because I was able to put work on it. So I put some work. I, I woke up at 9 a.m., head over to, to our my local boutique store, lined up for two hours, and I got my pair. And you're talking about? The Yeezy 500 Utility Black. Okay. And I'm wearing them right now, and I love them. Yeah. And there's just so many facets of that experience yeah. that make – 
it's so joyful in my opinion. Okay. Yeah. I'll put it this way, man. Like me and you and most people on this panel, we've kind of been, we've been in this thing, the sneaker thing for a little bit. And because of that, we're a little bit spoiled Absolutely. with how we acquire our sneakers nowadays. Yeah. Like I've, pretty much forgotten the experience of lining up for a shoe properly we've mm, we've maintained some hookups yeah right just and because like you know we've been around this for a while we talk the talk exactly we, we, we consider experts in our field okay right it's funny man because like whenever i tell people that have a pot like that we have a podcast yeah i would get hit up like people from going to japan it's like dude what would be the best walking shoe that i would right i would use right right yeah i got hit up by my friend who's like Yo, these Under Armour Currys, they're really good price. Are they good? That's and I would fine. give them my two cents. Yeah, man. Right? Yeah. But it, like I said, it's we've maintained some credibility. Yeah. So our copying ability has been Expanded better. A little bit. Yeah, man. Like just through this experience of the last three years now or two and a half years now, we've tried to maintain some personal connections yeah. with people that are able to help us once in a while and yeah. if someone's willing to help us i'm not going to say no absolutely and i've taken full advantage of it i i like i don't know if i should be ashamed of this or not it's just like i don't know what it's like to be an everyday fucking hustler trying to get sneakers nowadays let me tell you what the experience was dude all right i just decided that you know at 9 a.m i'm going to go line up and go pick them right go to go to my little local boutique store Lined up for two hours. Met some awesome people. One was actually from Atlanta. His name is CJ. Shout out to CJ. Shout out. Um, he's a drummer over at the cruise. And okay. It, and this was his first pair of Yeezys. Oh, shit. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So he travels around. He's in the cruise ship. Um, and on his off day, he decided to line up. He didn't know what was going to happen. Okay. Right. Which is a fair assessment because there's very few Yeezys that were first come, first served that I can remember. Absolutely. Okay. Line was 10 deep when I got in there. He was probably 11, 12th in line. Okay. Right? In front of me, nine deep, was a high school kid. Yeah. Lining up for the first time. Ever for a pair of sneakers. For a pair of sneakers. Because pretty much in Vancouver, the first come, first serve has almost been eliminated because apparently Vancouverites can't control themselves when it comes to lineups. <laughs> and we've seen this time and time again. There's always drama at every single lineup. So I don't blame the yeah. malls. I don't blame the retailers that have to kind of push for raffles nowadays. Absolutely. But I, I hear these 500 utility blacks. There may be enough pairs to not have to raffle. But anyways, how did your morning go? It was good. It was so good. Peaceful. Peaceful. No drama. No drama, dude. Put them on the podcast. Everyone, we listened to a couple of episodes, watched some YouTube videos. Yeah. They loved it. It was great. Like, people there were inviting. We were talking shoes for, like, two hours. That's what the lineups used to be like for me when I first started. And that no pressure, like, that no stress of not being able to get your shoes. Because, you know what? At 1 o'clock, yeah. which was... 11, 12, three hours after opening, yeah. you check on the forums and they were still having stock available. Yeah, like websites were still right? like full-size runs and shit. Absolutely, several restocks. And here's the thing too is that maybe it's these shoes were not the most sought after. Yeah. But the fact of the idea, Eugene, the idea of being able to, this is basically old school, the golden years yeah. of copying shoes where you line up, you got your size, yeah. And you know what? The resellers were just choked. Which is okay. Which is okay. Because if you want to be a reseller, you got to assume to take these risks. And you need, you got to know your product. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But one, a, a, a win, a loss of the resellers, in my opinion, is a little bit of a win for the re general release. People that will, like, buy to wear. Yeah. Okay. Well, the thing is, like, with this release, it really brings back of, you know, the memories of when I used to line up. And people used to just sit around and meet new people yeah and build your circle a little bit and then people talk to each other about the sneaker industry and like about the sneakers and like why we're getting this thing and how long we've been lining up and like when's the last time we lined up and like what was the previous experience like yeah and we do a lot of that kind of conversation but the last few like the 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 maybe the last two or three or four or five ten lineups i've been to it started not being that fun anymore well, the lineups that you're going through are raffle lineups. No, no, no. I mean, like, the first come, first serve. I'm talking about years and years ago. Oh, years ago. Like, the end of my lining up career, yeah. let's just say. It's just a lot of people that are very self-contained. Yeah. 
they're very uh, not social and it's just basically people s- maybe they have a chair maybe not maybe they were there the whole night maybe not but whatever the case it's just a bunch of people that keep to themselves yeah. checking ebay prices and checking StockX prices see during the lineup i'm like what the fuck's going on man like I, I it's just that it's not like oh it's fucking toxic and i hate these i'm not saying that at all man like resellers got to fucking find their shoes somehow too man yeah absolutely. And, and whatever if they put in work for it like whatever it's just they're working harder than whoever actually wants to, to get a pair for themselves to wear. It's just that work is is showing off. And see, that's another thing that I really liked about this release is that at the end of the day, dude, you got to put in your work. Yeah, man. Right? You got to put in your work. But doesn't it feel nice to finally have something like I put in work and it paid off for once? Absolutely. Not like the nonsense that we've seen time and time again. Absolutely, Eugene. And that's another thing, too, is that the work that you put in. I don't believe in just like free things. Like yeah. I, I, I like what I earned. Yeah. Right. And I put the two hour lineup and I think that's really nice. Yeah. And the fact that I was rewarded with these shoes, I'm cool with that. Yeah. Don't get me wrong, man. I'll take a handout here or there. Oh, absolutely. I'll totally do it. Make it easy. Exactly. Right. But it also nice to have, you know, to, to be able to be like, Hey, you know what? I'm not able to do so. I, it's, it's a game time decision that I bu- want to buy these. Yeah. I can go yeah. And, yeah. and line up for them. Yeah. Right, and I think that's the the kind of marketplace that Kanye West and Adidas were trying to aim towards. Yeah. They were testing it out for the last two years, I guess. And uh, by all means, like even though that these have virtually zero resale value, I st- doesn't make them any less of a cool shoe. Th- they're so comfortable, dude. Like they're comfortable. They look nice. Yeah. The color fucking is flawless. Yeah. All that stuff aside, like just because they don't have a resale value, does not make them any less cool. Which will get me to my second joy about this. Okay. I'm able to wear them without any guilt. Because you didn't overpay? Because I didn't overpay yeah. and because these have no resale value. Yeah. And if you fucking mess them up, you there's a good chance you can just get another pair. Absolutely. At retail. Absolutely, Eugene. They're Absolutely. replaceable. That's the thing is like, we all know this. Like, once we find out that our shoes are worth X amount of dollars, then you feel a little bit tentative to wear them. Yeah. Because you don't want to ruin the investment. Yeah. Right? That happens to me all the time. I buy a pair of shoes, okay? They were still worth whatever at the time. And then because I don't wear them, now that I take them out a year later, now they're worth too much for me to wear. Absolutely. Like the same thing happened for me with like Nike Yeezys. Yeah. I bought them like the resale the day of, maybe it was like five, six hundred dollars. Jeez. But like by the time I started wearing them, it's like, oh my God, now it's like fifteen hundred dollars. Damn. Now it's two thousand. Like I can't. Yeah. And, th- and that's what happened, man. Like my platinums, I had to sell it. Because I knew I was never going to wear them. I'm not going to wear $3,000, $4,000 pair of shoes. I know, man. So I'm like, let someone else fucking... It's like buying a... Like we talked about this last week. It's like buying a brand new car. It's the worst investment fucking ever. How can you say no, though, to like that that $3,000? Like, $3,000 you know, is a lot of fucking it, money. It's a lot of money. It's a lot of money. And it's good money. Yeah, man. I can buy like probably five or six pair of heaters yeah. that I would actually wear. Anything you can do. Go exactly, on a vacation. Man. Whatever, Fuck, whatever. Man. Right? Yeah. If someone like just... If you fucking invested with something and now you realize it's worth three, four, five thousand dollars, you'd be you'd lose your mind. It's good. And I took advantage of the value of this thing. Yeah. And I don't regret selling it just because at that time I got burned by Kanye like a few times because <laughs> like he legit canceled like Vancouver shows like three times in a row. Yeah, he did. And I missed a lot of fucking Kanye West. He did. And I was like, "Fuck Kanye." <laughs> I, you know what, I'm, I'm on, I'm on his dick right now because, like I said, it was, a, it he, was. He delivered what he promised. He is, which is and absurd. And September is gonna be even crazier. The restocks and yeah. stuff. Yeah, I can't. I, like those seven hundreds now is within your grasp. Very. So hopefully so, the, that release will be as successful for you. Man. Yeah. And so, dude, another thing that I thought about is that he's gonna carry on, like indefinitely. No, yeah. It, it, this brand will stand alone. Okay. And even, even without Adidas? Might be a little bit different. But what I'm yeah. trying to say is that even though he releases like a million of these shoes, it's going to stand alone because in the lineup, just people really respected Kanye. And just because it's a wide range of numbers, it's going to sell out in the allotment. That, and even if it goes into clearance in one of the silhouettes, it's not going to be a bad thing. We see Jordan go to clearance all the time, and we would have never thought of that. Yeah, like five years ago. This his strategy. We I know we were talking about this last week. His strategy is so different. Yeah, but it is going to be a good experience, in my opinion. Yes, 
and I think Adidas Adidas is going to win on it because they're going to sell a lot. Yeah. And it's going to be it will be sought after. It, it's just like you, you could see it as a business perspective. Adidas is making these shoes to make fucking money. Yeah. They're not making money at 10,000, 20,000, 30,000 units. Yeah. They're not making anything. They're not making stories. In, in the grand scheme of the billions of dollars that they fucking generate, yeah. these 10,000 units is not going to do a, a blip for them. But if they release a million fucking pairs at $300 a pair, yeah. now we're talking money. Uh, and why wouldn't they release a million pairs? It's just that they have to slowly, very, very slowly build up the hype and the prosperity of this brand which was really really smart of them in the so, very beginning because like if you ask anyone that's not 100 percent committed in the sneaker industry or in sneaker world or a sneakerhead themselves if you ask them what's the fucking hardest shoe to get right now they automatically just without thinking they'd be like easy i yeah. hear yeezys are really hard to get and now th- these black things came out and they're yeah. like oh shit yeezys came out oh shit they're sitting on the shelf maybe i'll get a pair yeah. too and that's what that n- guy was doing he could both the guys in front and behind me has yeah, not owned a pair of Yeezys, and he was telling me like, you know what? In Alabama, it was really hard. Atlanta, sorry, in Atlanta, it's so hard because like a Yeezy release like this would be already like fifty deep at nine o'clock a.m. Exactly, two hours prior to release. Now it's something that you can uh, is obtainable, which is something like building up a brand that is so far out of like the everyday person's reach. Yeah. Now you have a product in the same line just in a different colorway that is actually obtainable that makes a huge difference that's fucking plays with your mindset a little bit kind of like tesla has been building up their fucking high-end luxury vehicles for years and years and years and as soon as they announce like a fucking cheap quote-unquote cheap model 3 fucking day one i reserved one of these stupid cars did you reserve yours is coming soon though i hear november yeah but it's been pushed back a few times already i because i ordered like the cheapest one you can get and i got bottom listed (laughs) because they're like let's cater to these richie first (laughs) i I think jason's got fucking three of them (laughs) on on order (laughs) and he he bumped me all the way down (laughs) even though i I ordered day one doesn't matter but that's gonna like that's what i mean man like they were selling these hundred thousand dollar cars forever and all of a sudden, they're like, here's a car you can actually fucking afford. Like, yeah. you normie fucks can get one now. Just wait a little and I'm bit. I'm like, I'm a normie fuck, and I had to go get one. Because yeah. I was never able to get a Tesla before. Yeah. But now, like, these Yeezys, you can never get a Yeezy before. Now you can't. And everybody was like, I'll get a pair. Like, yeah. fuck, what's the worst that can happen, man? And like, so the people that are going to be the first people that got them and that were sought after and they were like, maybe they might get lost and maybe like, hey, you know what? I was there first and I don't need that anymore. You guys have at it, the 90%. Yeah. But who cares about the 10% when the 90% are spending the same money at the same amount? Yeah. Green is green to Adidas, man. Absolutely. It, it, it's a good experience, dude. I, it's one of those things where like, yeah, man, you finally, not finally, you were easily able to get a pair of Yeezys with no trouble in them. Yeah. You just put in the work and the work paid off. Yep. And that's a great feeling in the sneaker world. like The, ac- the, the sense of acquisition that you work for it, that's a great feeling that I kind of miss, man. Like, I haven't, like, fucking shamefully speaking, like, I haven't had to earn a pair of shoes in a long, long Crazy. time. Crazy, yeah. And I'm saying that not as an elitist. I'm just, like, trying to throw it this out there. The I'm truth. like, I, I just happen to have these kind of privileges, and yeah. I take full advantage of it. And because of that, I, I do get kind of lost and jaded in the world of sneakers nowadays. And that's why sometimes, Eugene, I, I look at you, and I'm like, I feel bad. You shouldn't feel bad. No, no, I feel bad because, like, not, like, like the, the you feeling don't pity that is me. just... It's just that you don't get the same kind of thing, like the same. I don't get the sense of reward. Absolutely. That the 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 commoners that line up and put in work and but I don't feel bad when you get like your first pick on (laughs) some really hype shoes because you're you know you work for Stay Fresh and they're giving you this opportunity. Yeah. Right. I hate you for that. Well. Sometimes, it, you know, I work really hard. Fuck. So Absolutely. It's like, hey, man, we got the early fucking pairs of uh, bread toes. I'm like, oh, fuck, okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's stuff right? like that, man. Right. And then later on, really, like, holy shit, apparently bread toes are really fucking hard to get. And I, I'm just so jaded. I'm like, but I got like a pair before release. And exactly. like, how hard can they be to get and all that stuff? Again, and that's when I talk about I get jaded. Again, it's a different way of doing things, right? Absolutely. When, when you start getting into a different sector of being a, a sneakerhead, yeah. whether it's the very beginning when you have to hustle or yeah. when you're up there and you've made all these com- um, connections yeah. and you don't have to line up or whatever, yeah. no matter what, there's certain things that is good in that sector. Yeah, man. It was a good experience, dude. Like I awesome. said, awesome. So uh, thank you, Kanye. I appreciate we talked it. about this like at length last week about like what is it gonna be like when Adidas starts flooding the market with Yeezys? Apparently, yeah. fucking consumers are happy, dude. On feet, out of the door, wearing nope. them. Exactly. 
So good for Adidas. Good for Kanye West for keeping his promise. Great shoe. I have I have zero problems with them like continuing this allotment of shoes. Like I have zero problems with that. Me too. Anything Me too. else you want to add to that story before no, we move on? No, that was it. That was it. Let's okay, just in in the interest of saving time and moving on and all that stuff, I asked for like a couple of questions on uh, social media, and I actually got one question that was really really good and we can get deep into this so let's i was it. gonna say like let's just put this out there as our main topic of the of the week and we can spend a lot of time on it all right sure so i met this cat like uh in toronto at the toronto sneaker con um last october i want to say nice so his name is just give me a second three two one so his name is john ratner john ratner he uh, writes for the National Post. Oh, nice. And uh, he, he somehow recognized me at the sneaker con, and we fucking exchanged words for a little bit. We exchanged contact. Cool. And then uh, he, when I threw out there, like, a fucking open Q&A, and he asked me a very deep question that I think we can probably have some fun with. Let's do it. So he says himself, it's kind of deep. Do you think it would be better if there was little or none of the current hype in the sneaker game, even if it meant more than half of us weren't into it? Essentially, leave it for the purists and non-hype beasts for the culture. Or is it better that it's bigger now? So essentially, Uh John's asking, do you think all the hype building more awareness to the sneaker game is good? Or is it bad that normies, quote unquote normies, aren't able to get the shoes? Like, wow, that's a really deep question. It's so it's a, a really few parts. Good question. So uh, like, you understand yeah. what he's asking, right? Yeah. So, like, we can all agree that there's hype surrounding this niche market of sneakers. Absolutely. Like, there's like the shoes that our dads will buy, and then there's shoes that only me and you and fucking one percent of the world is interested in. Absolutely. So we're talking about that one percent of people. Yeah. Those people exist, and they buy up all the really, really limited and cool shoes. Okay. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. We got the Yeezys, the Off-Whites and all that stuff. It's all the same people buying the same shoes, right? Yeah. Those people exist and they potentially can ruin it for people that might not have the know-how, the time, the resources, the connections to get the same kinds of shoes. We had this situation before with my friend. Remember Common Running Dude? Oh, yeah. Common Running Dude. And how CRG. he was so choked at sneakerheads. Yeah. Because Couldn't buy we, we triple black hyped UBs. up the triple yeah. blacks. Yeah. And it's not our fault. Yes. Right? So Well, that's the thing, man. Is it our fault that he can't get a pair? Is it? We're we're essentially the hype beast that, that John's talking about. Yeah. Yeah. And I can't even argue that because I buy the same hype shit that you want. And at in that essence, it's like I want it, you want it, but there's only so many pairs. There's more hype beasts than our sh- hype shoes. Because of that, all the hype beast shoes are fucking taken up. Mm -hmm. And the exposure is so grand, but uh, the ability to acquire these shoes is so limited Mm -hmm. that only a small percentage of the smallest percentage of people that are even interested are able to get a pair. Is that good for the market? I think it's good for the market. For the community. I think it's good for the overall good of the market, the business, the culture, everything. To bring awareness to this niche kind of hobby whether it's awareness whether it's hype it's bringing excitement to an inanimate object in my opinion because here's the thing dude at the end of the day these are just shoes that we will step on stuff right but the one thing that really makes this different is that the story behind it you know who's wearing it what can you wear with it what materials are used for it right what's the story behind it who designed it these are all the things that garner hype to make this a sought after shoe or not right and the people that are enthusiastic about these products they're the ones that put the time and effort to review to look into or to build connections to people from Nike or Adidas that will sell it or 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 release the shoe what I'm trying to say, dude, is that if it if there wasn't height, if there wasn't excitement, how would that drive the market? Okay. How would that, you know, how would we get excited with a pair of shoes or a release? And it'd just be dull. It would just be dull. And the one thing is, is that yes, it with with demand. Yeah. You know. If the supply is limited, yes, it's gonna ruin the other chance, other people's chances of copying. The supply and demand chain actually is kind of very much rooted in in how much hype a certain product carries. But I that's think. but that's the responsibility now of the brand. 
But they have to build up the hype by making it limited. Well, d- absolutely. It's very right? much correlated. I, I think, anyways, like if, if the off whites are a million pairs, maybe there wouldn't be as much hype around. Well, let me ask you this who builds the hype? Does the brand build the hype? Or do the people, influencers. It's, it's a very particular mixture, man. Yeah. Like you have to have just the right ratio of everything coming together. There has to, it has to be a, a good story behind it. Or it has to be some sort of nostalgia to it. it. has to be some sort of cool collaboration. Yeah. Some some Something noteworthy. Plus the fact that it has to be limited. Mind you, too. Just I thought about this. If you don't have hype, marketing, the whole idea of marketing is going to be dead. And there's no... There's not that's not gonna be um a job, right? Marketing is always building hype on how to how to sell a product. I think in the age of social media, building up hype has been a lot more broadened. It's, it's, people are a lot more aware of hype nowadays as before. It's just like, oh shit, what's coming out next year? I didn't even know. Yeah. And like, oh shit, these shoes already dropped? Like, I didn't even know. Like, that's what collecting shoes back in my day was like. Yeah. And nowadays, it's just like, oh shit, look at all these people wearing these shoes that aren't even out yet. I fucking need these things. Like, but, you know what I mean? But that's why there's so many shoes Is that healthy there. though? To like get these people wanting this shoe before they even see it or know what it is. Yeah. Like, trust me, I get into the hype, man. I want the fucking next iPhone and I don't even know what it looks like I yet. Know, you know right? what I mean? Like, yeah. I, I, I feed into this hype culture as much as the next fucking guilty person. And I, I have not that I don't have a problem with it. It's just like I understand it because I'm a part of that fucking quote unquote problem. Yeah. It's just like at the same time, because the hype is so built up, we are eliminating pretty much any chance for anyone else to enjoy these awesome products. But as we talked about in the past, with this hypeness, you have to put in the time, and it's all about the effort. Yes, you may, there might be a chance that you might not get it, but we've all come to realization that if you don't put the effort, you'll have. If you put the effort in, you'll have a better chance of getting it than someone who doesn't put the effort. Correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, it's either you, hey, you know what? I'm not even gonna try. I'm not even gonna try because. There's a chance that there's highly unlikely that I'm gonna get it. Yeah, I've been practicing that for a couple. Of I know, months now. I know. I'm, I was kind of thinking about you. Yeah, when I I'm said all right this, with right? it. And then there's I don't complain about not getting no, it though. Absolutely. And then there's people like myself. They're like, you know what? Even though I have like a the slightest hope of this getting to me, I'm still gonna try. Yeah. But You're I also, basically like the mentality is like you can't win the lotto without buying a ticket kind of deal. Exactly. Yeah. But but I've also like put the effort in and not True. gotten it and I've been choked you you were salty though right so salty yeah man I just eliminate the salt from that diet right and then I'm okay with myself but then come to realization is that that's part of the game yeah I right? understand I I understand how the game is played yeah and I get to choose whether or not I play it I know so I, I chose a different route yeah. to get in shoes nowadays and I'm okay with that but uh, it, it's just like with all these companies building super limited edition shoes Shoes that virtually me and you can't get, and Jason once in a while fucking hits a <laughs> hits the lotto. So whatever the case is, like these shoes exist out there, and then we know people that has them. Yeah. Just me and you, we we can't get them. That yeah. if me and you can't get them, that just means how fucking crazy hard they are to get. In yeah. my opinion, anyways. And these shoes are marketed to the same fucking people that are spending money for all the same shoes. How are they going to broaden the horizon of like the common people trying to buy these shoes? I don't think like I don't think like our friends that are into sneakers will all of a sudden want a pair of off whites. No. Like, so who is this for? Are they trying to build, like, a, a kind of brand awareness? It goes, oh, I remember fucking the news. We're talking about these off-white things. That's Nike. Yeah, Nike but, fucking makes these shoes. I want these shoes. But wouldn't you feel privileged because because the people that attain these sought-after or hype shoes, yeah, most likely these brands, off-white Jordan collaborations, they did it for us. Yeah. I would, I would like to think that, yeah. Yeah. And I'm okay with that. Yeah. Right? Because... I don't want no common running guy yeah. running on a pair of Jordan 1s off-white, yeah. right? Yeah. Because I'd be just like, you got those? Okay, like, I'll flip it then. Now that you brought that up. Now all the hypebees are buying all the fucking cool shoes and the, the normies can't get them, right? What if this normie guy just happened to stumble upon a raffle, entered it because like he heard it was a cool shoe and he won a pair, not knowing anything about it? Would you be choked at that? Depends on how he does it. 
He just won a pair, and he goes, "What are these?" I don't well, know what, what is he are. gonna do with it? Are you, is He's he gonna, gonna wear it around and like fucking. Man, I'm cool with that because you know what? It checks the boxes that I believe in. Okay, he put in the effort. Okay, right? Um, he probably has some sort of inkling what the shoe is all about. He just knows it's valuable. They're valuable, but he's not gonna resell them. Um, maybe he doesn't know the true value of it, so maybe it's just like what if a CRG, the common running guy, he won a pair of off whites, okay, and he's w- wearing it like once in a while, not knowing the true value of this thing. Yeah, kind of like you see like the fucking driver with like the L on, on or the N and on, on the back a, is a Ferrari. A Lambert, yeah, yeah. Like, how do you feel about that? But he's still wearing them. I think it's cool because it, it gives him the opportunity. It, it's it's another opportunity to be one common guy yeah. to be into the sneaker game. Yeah. Because here's what's going to happen. He's going to wear those shoes. Break some necks. Break some necks. Someone's Appreciate probably going to... attention. Someone's probably going to compliment him. It's like, wow, those are really nice shoes. Do you know how much those are? Do you know how hype those are? How did you get them? Panties dropping. Yeah. And he's going to like the attention. Yeah. Right? Whether it's good attention or bad, he's going to like that. And he's probably going to be like, hey, you know what? What's the story of these? Right. Oh, who's Virgil? Right. Oh, he's LV now? That's right. crazy. Like, don't get me wrong, man. The chances of, like, an, a normal, everyday fucking non-sneakerhead getting a pair of these off-whites by chance, that's a very, very low fucking predicament. I've seen it happen about. before. But, dude. of course, it, it could happen. Right? Yeah. You never know. But the fact that this can broaden the horizon, like, it brings the brand awareness that fucking off-white is cool. Fucking Nike is cool. Jordans are cool. Like, yeah. it, it fills multiple facets to, to our fucking hobby. And ask if you ask me, like, anything that brings attention to something that I love, yeah. like, we've seen it before with a lot of niche things, man. Like, fucking comic books blew up the last fucking 10 years. Yeah. And I would have never thought that day would come. Fucking esports is a real thing now. Yeah. I, I never thought that day would come because only, quote, unquote, losers played video games on all that shit, right? And that's what thing is. That's what's awesome. And you, you can attest to this, yeah. right? The moment when your thing that you are enthusiastic about oh, back the whole in the time day. now it's a fucking thing? mainstream thing now you're like wow like that's cool because i was part of the beginning or the roots yeah. but now you feel like you're an elitist like there's chances of people doing that man like if you were reading batman before fucking chris nolan made those movies yeah you'll feel like an elite but that all depends on the person right True. like with great power comes great responsibility right, right? whether you be like whether you're like you start scoffing at people like, ah, oh, you know what? I used to wear Supreme before, before you guys did. Right? Oh, we know those people. Yeah. <laughs> or you can be the ones that are like, hey, you know what? I used to wear Supreme. Did you know that these are the lines back in my day that like, hey, I really love this 2012 release because it came with this, this, and this. Did you know that? Do you know you're still missing two pieces out of this four? <laughs> like that. You know, stuff like that. Yeah. Like, because now you become a subject matter expert for that thing. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And you get to help people like you get to help people and just say, you guys did that for me with Air Maxes. Yeah. Right. Like yeah. I didn't know you about this. The boat. I missed the boat. And now like I love I love Air Maxes, yeah. dude. Love Air Maxes. Not I find that this shoe has the most potential for versatility when it comes to colorway. Definitely. And we've seen it. There's a trillion and a half colorways of this shoe, right? And, and that's the thing, man. Like anytime like a niche thing that you're fucking very endeared to gets mainstream attention that's a good thing i think like if anything like these comic books these video games and all that stuff or or fucking collecting whatever like now that they've seen mainstream attention and it just makes it more uh, even bigger Mm -hmm. and now the companies that produce these things have to pay attention that they're getting this attention from the general public and they have to cater to it yeah so like if my mom started talking about off-white Air Jordan ones. That means that it's reached. Yeah, it's non-demographic, which is even a further reach than they can help hope for. To add to that, though, is that now it's once that happens, it's now their responsibility and how to take that power now, right? Because they've reached mainstream. Yeah. Okay. So very, let's just say fashion, like streetwear and sneakers, are on the brink of mainstream media. I would on say the so. brink of it. Like yeah. we're not there yet. It's still yeah. niche. But we're it's, very, very close. Yeah. Because of the celebrities that gets constant coverage. To the point. Anyways. Dude, I have have like normal running guys, normal running guys, <laughs> asking about like Supreme. Oh, what are you wearing? Supreme, are you wearing Supreme? Like, what's the story about Supreme? All that stuff, right? And now, like, I would tell him, like, you know what? If you didn't know, Supreme was actually l- a long standing. It's before my time, kind yeah. of shit. Yeah. I'm just riding the hype train. I'm not there. I'm probably like the fourth, fifth tier of people that have it gone yeah. into Supreme. Yeah. 
Right? You're getting the stuff you can get. Yeah. And back in the day, it was just a lonely street, uh, lonely skateboard uh, clothing store. Right. Right? And they still are, but now it's been... It's a different thing now. It's a huge yeah. thing now. It's right? global. And, and the thing is, like, like, my mom's heard about Supreme because, like, she read on the news that some kid got jumped for a Supreme hoodie and shit like that. Oh, it's yeah. not the best fucking news. Yeah. But at the same time, it's like, why are people getting jumped for fucking hoodies and all that I'm like yeah. let me tell you ma yeah kind of deal and like now she understands like the fucking significance of this certain brand I'm not saying it's a good or bad thing that it's it's come to the way it is yeah. I'm just saying like now more people that are unaware of, of this culture they know why these things have value to it absolutely because there's 10 shirts and there's 10,000 people <laughs> that want these shirts kind of deal right absolutely and dude. of course like the fucking limitations of how how far you can get with this culture like that depends on the amount of work you you put in so and it's also dude if you want to be part of the culture cool and if you don't that's cool too right i'm not yeah that's what we're yeah that's what we're at on it i i love this like i have a job that is you have to wear some really really swanky stuff but i would love to be just draped in streetwear um in my everyday life because i find it more comfortable the silhouettes are even better um that's just how I like it, you know? Absolutely awesome question. It's just like I, whether or not me and you, not me and you it's like specifically, but like people like me and you are ruining the game for everyone else. I think this game was meant with a very high level of entry. Like, yeah. like to break into the entry level for this game, you have to do your own work. We put a lot of freaking time and, and money. effort and, and money yeah, and, 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 and research. Like we, I haven't put the time, like, let me, let me get this straight. I'm not OG. Like, you know, like you and Joe and Jason are, but I know that I'm part of yeah. that culture and I'm responsibly in it because I do everything in a good sneaker ethics, in my opinion. So I guess in our fucking jaded little minds, I guess our take is like we've put in the hours, we've put in the mileage to be a part of this subculture, culture, Absolutely. subculture. And these people that are quote unquote claiming that people like us are ruining the game for, for the normies out there. The normies out there are normies. Be, like, I, I'm saying this like I don't mean it to be offensive. Well, it's just like an easy way to fucking categorize people. The normies out there are just considered that because they haven't put in the work. They yeah. haven't put in the mileage, the time, the fucking years. They look at and a the line. Dollars, right? They look at a line they're and like, they'll already be fools. discouraged about it. They're, they, they're either saying that it's a waste of time. Yeah. Then at that time, it's like, all right, bro, then maybe this isn't for you. See, that's that's what I don't understand is that these same people that ask in the line. That claim we're ruining it. Yeah. Are the ones that are like asking the line and and scoff at us, and next thing you know, when there's a lot more pairs released, or they find out that there's a resale value in it, yeah, these are the, also the same people that are like, hey, you know what? Let me get a piece of this, right? Let me let me try to raffle and see if I can flip yeah. it. Yeah, right. It, it's 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 a double edged sword, but like don't don't knock it if you're gonna be part of it later on. That's what I don't like. Those bandwagon jumpers, whether it's NBA or 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 the or the World Cup or whatever, yeah. right? Dude, like I've seen some like put pictures of them wearing an England kit and I'm like, so where's it now? Yeah. <laughs> where, I'll, I'll bring it up in four years. Yeah, where is it now? Where what you, you you show me a picture of you like four years ago that has an England kit. Yeah. But why don't you not wearing it right now? Oh, you gave it away. Oh, I see. <laughs> How co coincidence. I see. How well, uh, the thing is, like, I want to stress also before we go, stress that all these people in the lineups that you see that are trying to get a pair of very expensive resale shoes, like, if you're talking about, like, oh, like, I lined up for an hour, hour and a half to raffle for a pair of the zebras when they first released and at the time i'm like oh i can't afford these shoes like that's the thing man like people are assuming oh, a lot of these fucking kids lining up they just fucking want a chance to fucking resell the shoe and make a couple of hundred bucks i'm like mm, that's not 100 percent the case man some yeah. of us just can't afford two thousand dollar shoes yeah. and the only way for us to get it is to fucking line up yeah and absolutely. pay retail and even at retail i'm like yeah should i eat today or not <laughs> i know you know right. you know you know right and I like at resale price is like out of the question for me so not everybody in these lineups are all resellers. People just can't afford the resell, so they have to put in the work. Like people like you put in the work to get those utility blacks. We you, start off the market first. We the we dictate the market absolutely. And if we're not willing to pay the fucking money, then oh, the next guy will pay it. But 
the, as long as someone's willing to pay that money, that's where the fucking the market is. At, and right? that's so. another conversation. Yeah, that's fucking. That's the, another topic. But the one thing is, dude, is that the brands, yeah, Nike and Adidas, yeah. catered to us in the very beginning. Yeah. Right, they built this for us, and we helped them hand in hand. Yeah, with our dollars, build whatever this is right now. Okay, the people that say that, hey, you know what, we're ruining it for them. We actually built it for you guys to be able to do so. Right, it's the brand's responsibility now whether they're going to keep the it limited, or or cater to you guys and open up this mass numbers to sell. So. At the end of the day, they should be thanking us and not criticizing us because if you're going to be part of it, we're the ones that um, brought this together. So, hey, Before we go, I want to give you a quick update. Okay, I just got a message maybe like five, ten minutes ago. Oh, yeah. from I, I won't say who it is, but his IG handle is IBS negative. Okay. 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 Uh, last week we were talking about like what if Supreme appeared in the fucking video game is like uh, unlockable uh, or, or a fucking... Uh, like a, like a pay, pay yeah, pack yeah. transaction. Yeah. So what if that happened? Like people will go nuts I'd be and all over that. So IBS negative, like inform me that Supreme was a sponsor for a Thrasher skate and destroy game on the PS1 in 1999. So Supreme has been in a video game before. The only problem was the game was really bad. <laughs> so they were in a skate game before. Yeah. So, so you can see the screenshot right there. Dude, that's sick. You'll see the Supreme banner on one of the skate parks and ibs negative we all know him he's if you know you know yeah he's he's into the skateboard culture, like he's right like every time he's talking about like like he was a, a pro s- snowboarder right was he a pro or a skater he was a skater okay yeah but he know he snowboards also because they come hand in hand yeah because you're on a board very dope dude so dope. Yeah, ibs negative shout out to shout that out. little fucking i i had no idea man i think like even if i had played that game i, w- I wouldn't have even you should know. post that picture because that's really crazy i will it's a picture of the supreme logo in black mind you yes. black and white yeah the white lettering on a black uh logo yeah. bo- box logo <laughs> skate or die he said uh that's kind of cool. That's a that's a good grab. See, and stuff like this, man. Like this guy, IBS Negative, has been. It's it's a hand in hand collaboration where we we love his work, he loves ours, and he's able to like educate us in things that are are part of history, are part of sneaker history or or, or street culture. So the the brand is called or the game is called Skate and Destroy. Skate and for Destroy. PS1 1999 and like just looking at the screenshot this game does look pretty bad already. I think I might have to buy this so just for like nostalgia. <laughs> I'm sure I just, can find I got it. a Supreme video game, guys. Exactly, right? So shout out to IBS Negative, man, Thanks, for putting that out. Hopefully Supreme will make a comeback in video games, man. You never know. Yeah. You know what Supreme needs to fucking jump on? They need to jump on like snowboarding. Holy fuck. If Supreme started releasing snowboard gear, people would go ape shit. What if it's already in the works for winter? Well, they have been working with North Face forever yeah, now, right? right? So you never know. You can technically snowboard with some of that I've shit. I've seen people snowboard in that Because it's fly as fuck. <laughs> they just blend right in. Like, if anything, like, I used to. I had to sell it because people gave me so much money for it. Yeah. I had a uh, Bape OG camo uh, snowboarding jacket. Dude, so when I was at Bape, I talked to the guy who was a snowboarder. And he says that they do have, like, snowboard gear. And they're so dope. But they're pretty expensive. They are because like I sold mine for like three thousand dollars <laughs> for like a lot of money. Three grand. I bought it at the time because like fucking I went to Hong Kong and like yeah. nobody in Hong Kong snowboards because it's like eighty degrees over yeah. there, right? And like I just bought them like I guess I'll buy it for retail. Like Damn. mind you, in retail is still stupid, but there's no sales tax in yeah. Hong Kong, so whatever. When I was there at Bape, they were they had the Gore-Tex type of jackets, and they were awesome. They, they were and Gore-Tex is what we use for snowboarding gear so Canadian sure. brand by the way is it really yep I didn't know that yeah man and anyway so uh, shout out to the uh, John for, for the question that thanks, was awesome thanks John we got a good fucking 20-30 minute Appreciate conversation it. Yeah, out of that it. Was dope. and congratulations man you got some Yeezys with next to no effort and hopefully this trend continues and I'm looking at it right now on my feet everyone that wants a pair of Yeezys will get yeah. a pair of Yeezys I've been seeing that Kanye quote pop up on my Twitter feed like crazy lately uh, thanks Kanye really it was it's not just Kanye Adidas has some part in it too so shout out to both of them it's the yeah that's true but there is that Yeezy factor so but are you looking forward to the Kanye West uh, uh, Payless 
that he talked about. He did say pay less on Ellen's show, right? He said pay less? Yeah, man. Ooh, I'm a little bit worried about that one. He might keep that promise too, my friend. You never know. <laughs> yeah, well, we'll see. Um, <laughs> pay less is one of those brands that... Uncools things. Whenever they had the BOGO... <laughs> Oh, buy one get buy one. one. The real, uh, actual the definition real of Bogo. Bogo. <laughs> yeah, they're the ones. That, uh, I just, I just try to stay away from that. But you know, Payless. There's a reason why they're a brand that's been re- there, that's been yeah, for man. a while. So fuck, man. Like I always say, man. People like me and you, we make Nike no money. It's people like like our mom and dads and uncool siblings <laughs> that spend all the money on monarchs <laughs> yeah man you think the fucking they can you think nike and jordan brand can survive on jordan money oh on God. retro money no man there's not enough of those uh, the, fucking monarchs sell nine trillion pairs a year you know that's the one thing still that i still can't grasp it because like i find that like yes it's yes the numbers are there you know, you, you all the money is in the other types of brands, like the other types of, of yeah. silhouettes, right? Yeah. But those people are not as loud and as not as boisterous as we are. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Like, w- we make known through social media or through through podcasts that we have we like these shoes. Yeah. And yes, there's not as much numbers as like the monarch. Yeah. And those guys are quietly spending that much money so i still what i'm trying to say is i still kind of don't believe it but i know that the numbers, numbers are there are, man yeah i know the themselves. numbers are real the thing is like again we talk about it it's always there's 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 websites yeah. about these yeah there's no websites about like the new release monarchs that are i bet there in. should be <laughs> well the thing is like we talk about the business of sneakers quite a bit on this podcast and it just comes with the territory that's the stuff that fucking interests us yeah and the culture of it it doesn't always fall in line with the business. No. And that's the interesting part to me. That's why I like to fucking have these long-term, that's uh, true. the long-form discussions that we have uh, correlating how the business side relates to the culture side of things. Yeah. And I find it super interesting. Like, why is nobody talking about Monarchs and Stan Smiths and Superstars? Yeah. Because they are the money makers of these brands. And all we talk about is stuff that fucking makes no money for, for the brands. We talk about Yeezys that fucking release 10,000 pairs. We talk about Off-Whites that release fucking six pairs, yeah, you know? If we start talking about the latest release of Superstars, I don't think we have enough followers like other people Well, and do. that's the thing, man. Like, we only talk about stuff that interests us. Yeah. And, uh, of course, like, stuff that we can easily get and be like, why don't you talk about it? You get to go experience it yourself. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I, I want to get out of this podcast is like, me and you having this conversation is like, what if this? What if that? And yeah. that's the best part of, of having these stupid, nonsensical, <laughs> first world problem discussions that, the, that we have but that's the, the best thing about it is and this the, is me is. just replicating what it was like back in the good old days of lining up for sneakers <laughs> these are the kind of fucking conversations we used to have which i experienced exactly last man and and that's once again tying it back to this podcast and sneakers and all that stuff this podcast was basically created by me just to relive the good old days of lining up and talking nonsense about sneakers Absolutely. and that's what we fucking been fulfilling for 83 episodes now. hey who knows maybe this Yeezy line is gonna achieve that. Oh, there you go. Imagine just Bring like ba- maybe there'll be a ton of new fucking sneaker podcasts I can listen to. <laughs> By the time people are like talking about sneakers, pretty dope with strangers, mate. Come holler at us because I know if the, if if you're new and wanting exactly. to see what's going on, yeah, man, you can easily be contacted and just Super see easy. bounce ideas off, right? Exactly, man. So if you have anything that you want us to talk about, you have any questions that you want us to answer on here. Just hit us up on Twitter at Sneakerfiles, on Instagram at Sneakerfiles underscore podcast, or you can email us, sneakerfiles at gmail.com. And uh, of course, uh, we're always taking ideas because I want to fucking cater the show to our listeners yeah. and whatever ideas they have, whatever topic they want us to cover, we can probably try and uh, weasel our way into those topics. Yeah. And of course, man, like there's only so much to talk about Dude, on a weekly basis. We, we, we want to be part of... Uh, we want you guys to be part of the family that is Sneaker Files, that yeah. is Stay Fresh. Seriously, because at the end of the day, the more people that we add to our squad, the bigger that we become and the more stuff that we can talk about. Exactly. Actually, well, I, 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 maybe I'll talk to you about this afterwards, but like I, we talked about something with uh, Kev, Kev Zoo. Yeah. Uh, and I'm thinking about doing something with him and maybe do, I'll cut this all out. And maybe like... Uh, We'll get into something later, but yeah, he, some, he, he released a new article, and the fr- first picture was monarchs, and I was like, "Hell yeah!" And I was like, "Oh, I don't know about this one because it's monarchs, but but I'm gonna take a read into it." So because he's very smart, that guy's a very smart yeah, gentleman. Man. So so yeah, Kev Zool from uh, soulfullylaced.com. Soulfully yeah, take a read. 
Anyways, anything else you want to add before we sign off? No, man. I'm excited for next week. Who knows what's going to happen with those this elements? 87s, game. man. Good luck to everybody. By the time you guys listen to this, it's already out. You yeah. already have your pairs and everything. So good luck to everybody. Are those designed by Virgil? No, they're very reminiscent of that. Aren't okay, they? okay. So that's false then. Never so, mind. anyways, uh, for the Sneaker Files podcast, this is Eugene. My name is Pierre. Happy hunting, guys. 